Right. <laughs> what are you so excited I'm about? really happy. Calm down. Why are you so excited? This is great. Right. Cheers, Cheers. pal. Oh, this feels familiar. What are we doing here? Why are we here? Well, I'll be honest with you. I've been thinking about doing this for about a year. Uh, I spoke to you about it a few times, saying we should do something. And um, we spoke to Susan, tried to get a special off the ground, and it's it's hard to get the cast back together, as you know, especially when one of them didn't answer the phone for about three years. No names? No names. So uh, it's hard. Um, so, At but least two of them don't answer the phone to me. At least... <laughs> oh, I've done better than you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mind you, no, you're, you're right. more popular than <laughs> But no, and I wanted to get this, I, I wanted to sort of, you know, a bit of nostalgia, get back to... Because this feels... So what you're saying is... Right. Instead of us doing a triumphant return to the show that we used to do when we were kids, we couldn't make that happen, so we're just sitting here drinking some beer. <laughs> chatting <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the main thing is, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's getting back... And, and Do you know what? There's, there's a real thing about this that I honestly... I mean this, that without the people that love Two Pints, Two Pints would not have gone on anywhere near as long as it would have. That's because true. the critics slaughtered it, slagged it off, pile of shit and all that, and <laughs> well, I don't know if they sit there with the actual words. <laughs> I don't think they said that. But you know what so I mean? Stop doing it down. But you know what I mean? But the thing is, the critics didn't get behind it, and the people that was the ones that kept it going. So I thought, at least give them a little bit of nostalgia, and we could talk about the old days and have a bit of fun and have a few beers. Tell the story of how, um, of how that happened. Of how, well, like, well, Two Pints was like a success almost by accident. There's, there's a lot of things throughout history that have been a success by accident. Um, the Royal Family is sort of a success by accident. Um, Seinfeld famously um, was gonna was bombed with the viewers and they were gonna just jib it. But then it was really popular with the demographic of uh, the advertising demographic that they wanted to advertise to. So that's the only reason it stayed alive. There's a reason, tell the story of how, why Two Pints survived and then ended up becoming a, a success. I don't know, I think it was just because it was a bit of a cult. Um, I think because we said things that other shows weren't saying, um, we were sort of doing things that other shows were a bit scared to do. And I think because it was on BBC Three, we had we got, we got away with it a little bit more. Um, but it started on BBC Choice. Did it? Yes, it did. BBC Choice, it started on BBC that Choice. Channel. First series was BBC Choice, which was before BBC Three, right? And then they, I mean, this is my understanding of it, so nobody needs to write me any letters. But then BBC Three was launched, and um, or it was supposed to be launched, and something happened like uh, they didn't they didn't okay it with the government first, or there was a problem like the whole launch or a proper like full launch of BBC Three got delayed. So they had this channel and they had no content to fill it because they couldn't they couldn't afford to make any programs. So they just repeated the arse out of two pints. Every evening because what they had no it? because they had hardly any other shows, right, and right, so two right. pints just sort of found this audience that otherwise it would never have found. It was, yeah, it was basically a huge hit. And, yeah, and also by accident. the repeat. We basically kept BBC Three alive for about eight years. Yeah, but the thing was, my think, house is not big enough. <laughs> I, th I think I think the re the repeats were the main thing. You know, beyond. And they repeat it at nights. Nice. People are getting after a few beers and stick it on. And it's, it was easy watching. It was one of the first shows that did that as well because, like, this you forget now in the modern world where there's Netflix and this and Sky yeah. and everything. But like in that world, there was not very many channels, and so there weren't shows that just repeated on. You know, you can yeah. watch Friends any time of the day anywhere yeah. now, or The Simpsons or whatever. But that was the one of the first British shows that just and first British channels that just repeated and repeated and just built this massive following. Could you imagine if if Two Pints <coughs> was as big as it was in America, we'd be Keiko. Mate, we'd be doing this in two heli in a private jet. Well, do you, do you know, apparently Friends, the people who cast of Friends still make a few million pounds a year now, and they've not been doing it for how many years? That's good, I'm glad though, because I was worried about them. Were you worried about them? I was, I was just worried that they weren't going to have enough to see them through. I said that, I was thinking, God. <coughs> but yeah, no. good times, man, though. If we'd have had our careers that we've had in America, yeah. we'd be... Ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. I, 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 I worked it out. I mean, I say worked it out. This is guesswork. I didn't like sit down, but I spent quite a bit of my missus American, so I spent a bit of time over there now. And I'm starting to understand what like American market is like for doing the work that we do. We'd be worth about 
30 million each. Boy, this would be insane. Yeah. I don't know about you, I'm not. No. No. Still waiting for the repeat checks. <laughs> yeah. it's, on, it's on BBC I play all the time. I don't get paid a piss not off for it. Not a penny. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Do you know what you get? £1.75 and your agent still takes 15%. <laughs> Seriously, if you ever get you get excited, you go, whoa, oh, check, oh, check. Oh, check. Oh, check. <laughs> open up. Yes. Well, I had an old agent who um, I got a 21 pence uh, slip saying, oh, a repeat fee years ago. And, um, and they, took the, they took their commission out of it and had sellotaped the coins, the like 19 pence in coins. <laughs> the thing. And it wasn't a joke. That was them going, we've done our job. I was like, you can't let 21 pence, uh, two pence go. Yeah, anyway. How do you, I mean, do you remember, how long did you do? You did seven series, the two pints. Yeah. Was it seven? I think so, yeah. You did 10, didn't you? Nine, I think it ran for 10, was it 10 series? Yeah, 10 series. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I thought it was nine series over 10 years. That's where I got, because it was one year where we didn't do it. Was there? I think there was. I don't know. What was the live episode like? That was the first episode oh, that I wasn't in. That was proper nerve wracking, um, but, like the best feeling ever when it was over, you know, because it was Susan, as Susan being Susan, she didn't just write let's do the most a novel episode. Thing we can do. No, no, let's just, yeah, let's learn to juggle fire on a fucking unicycle. Did you juggle fire? I did, didn't and you? And the unicycle. The unicycle got taken out because I fell off it that many times and done my knee in. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I was going to say I didn't remember a unicycle. No, I was in rehearsals like this. Are oh, you fucking joking? Juggling with fire is one thing, but they want to be on a fucking unicycle. <laughs> Right? Susan, having a laugh. Wouldn't you have only had a week to learn as well? No, no we, had, we had a couple of weeks and I was learning the fire thing and I had to juggle with it and then eat it or, and then stick one down my kex. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh. And we did that. Um, no, That's it was, the kind of character comedy that made it. <laughs> re yeah. Realistic character comedy. No, when it was it live hit. was was just the, the nerves, man, was unbelievable. But, you know, once you finished it... What did you have us have to do? What did Sheridan have to do? Sheridan had to, she had to come down in like a ring singing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, um, um, I can't remember, there was other bits. There was like rhyming stuff, I think. And I had to ride a little miniature motorcycle dressed as Evil Knievel. <laughs> Handlebar went right up my ass. It did, you can see me walk out. If you ever watched the episode, I have to, I have to go, yeah, and then ride and then crash and fall <laughs> off it. The Handlebar went right up my ricker. And then <laughs> if you watch it back, <laughs> You can actually see me walk out like that. They think I was acting, but it wasn't. I had to have a nurse come back to the room afterwards and put a plaster on my ass. Did you have to? Did she have to? Yeah, she said, where is it? No, but, you know, it wasn't in the hole. It was on the shelf, you know, just inside the cheek. So she, but she, but we had to do a little bit of a parting. Honestly, the rap party was going on. I said, can we get a plaster on my ass? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Oh no, yeah, Sometimes. no, it was great. It was good. <laughs> did, did you know this? I um, I texted, uh, texted or emailed Stephen Crum, um, I, for people at home, our producer. Exactly. Well, Stephen Crum, he was like the poshest. He was the poshest dude. He was like, oh, he made Hugh Grant sound <laughs> like he was like a. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still laughing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You like skeletal. You wouldn't think it was anything to do with two parts, but he had. Um, remember when we played that game where you had to do. We had to come up, remember, <laughs> concentration. <laughs> I, 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 just to clear it up for everyone, we, we, we used to stay in Runcorn and film all the outside stuff first before we go into live audiences. Two weeks shoot. in Runcorn every yeah. year. Yeah, <laughs> we just got pissed, had a great time. Um, and then <laughs> in the evenings, we'd all there sit around, wouldn't we? To do. And we'd, be, we, like, we'd sit in the bar, a few drinks, we'd play concentration, and it'd be like, concentration, are you ready? If so, let's go. And then there'd be a subject set, and the subject was names for ladies bits. And Steve McCrum went, pink lettuce. <laughs> pink lettuce. <laughs> they were finished us off. Finished us off. That's speak. what I, you know he won a BAFTA. Pink lettuce. You know he won a BAFTA in later years, and I still, that's the only thing I can remember him for, is pink lettuce. Pink lettuce. We were all going, we all went, Fanny Hole. Like, yeah. That's the funny yeah, we, we were all giving it all of them. Right. Oh, like, have you yeah. seen one? Baby <laughs> Gash. And then he went, Pink Lettuce. And we all just went. Yeah, he was, he was, he was bonkers, wasn't oh, he? Oh, God. But he, um, so he was the poshest guy in the world. He was a bit like, 
Yeah, um, how he, he was sort of heading up a, a working class 20 something sitcom, I'll never understand. <laughs> but yeah. I texted him and I was like, um, or emailed him, and I was like, hey, look, so look, I've left the show. <clears throat> um, you know, he knew at this point, this wasn't a surprise. You were, <clears throat> you would announce and you were rehearsing that you were doing a live, a live episode. And I was like, hey, listen, um, uh, it's great that you're doing a live episode. How wonderful. Like, you know, I still love the show. I love the guys. I'd, I'd love to like come along as a member of the audience and like show my support. And he went, no, you're not welcome. <laughs> Did he? Did he really? Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. And I went, what, do you mean not welcome? And he said, well, I just worry that you'll put them off. I was like, yeah, you're, you you're, just you're already crawl. juggling you're fire. <laughs> you're shit. <laughs> yeah. I was in this. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not dead. <laughs> yeah. Dad, what did you think about how they killed you off? It's typical, Susan, isn't it? Et by a shark. Just... I think I actually quite like it. I think I think to do the whole thing about having jumped the shark is is a clever it's probably the cleverest joke in the entirety of two points. Most of it's like unicycles going up your arsehole, but that no, one was actually quite a clever. It's a miniature motorbike. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but that one was actually quite a clever like film in joke. Quite liked it. Yeah, they were good times, man. All right, okay. What? What? Oh, shit. Concentration. Are, Are you ready? ready? If so, oh. let's go. You got to feel the subject. Okay, all right. Types of lager. Fosters. Caliber. Forex. Heineken. <laughs> what? Heineken! Stella. I, I can't think of it. Yeah. 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 One nil. Yeah. Pink glasses. <laughs> Pink glasses. Should we do yeah. that one? That was good. Should we do that one? No. Or will it get us in trouble? Oh. Stop picking your beak. He's making me laugh. I'm snorting. That was funny. Oh. Oh. Lettuce. Do you remember in Two Pints, right? We'd be sat in a bar like this. Um, and the only difference with this is, because it seems very similar to me, but the... The audience obviously is over there. And the amount of times obviously you crack up, but we we had the, the we named the barmaid. Remember, she never <laughs> she never had any lines. When you say we named her, you named her. <laughs> no, I'm not sure it was me. <laughs> it was a hundred percent you. What did you name her? And why? <laughs> Norma. Why why did you call her Norma? What no. was her second name? <laughs> Stitz. <laughs> she had massive tits. But that's how young we was. That made me laugh for years. Norma, we got it in the show. Yeah. Two pies, Norma. Two pies, please, Norma. And she went, <laughs> okay. Honestly. Black. Like, seriously, big old tits, weren't they? Like, mum tits. Who were... <laughs> mum tits. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Like, big, 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 big boobs. <laughs> um, yeah, you, yeah. I've, I've got lovely. the point. Yeah. No, she was lovely. Didn't she get a line in the end? Yeah. She, she got did. a line, yeah. She did. I, don't, I think they actually started writing in. Hey, the Norma. boys shout out to Norma. We just made it up. I'm not entirely sure that they knew why we were calling her Norma. Do you remember when they said, don't play darts in the pub? <laughs> <laughs> why, why they said, don't. Well, I'll let you explain this one. There was a dartboard in the pub, right? And there was darts in it. And in between takes, right, they said, lads, please don't be playing darts. And we, like, absolute dicks, because we were, what, like, I would have been, like, 19, 20, and you'd have been, like, 30, I was 22 or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, no, I was 22, I think, 21. 22. How, how old are you? 43. Hey, you're three, three years older than me, so, so I was 22. 22. And, and we, how, by the way, how they managed, like, our egos, not just us two, but all of us, five, Five kids, <laughs> already actors, which is already a pain in the ass. And then in a successful show where people came to watch it, how they managed our ego. The concentration never... span of like three seconds. Oh, unbelievable. Anyway. They Back said, to the darts. Yeah, the dart they said, board. lads, please don't play darts in the pub. And we've got, we go, <laughs> why not? Don't be ridiculous. Hey, don't be stupid. What's the matter? People play, like the dead, dead Mike. People play darts <laughs> in pubs in real life. Why what's, can't the, play what's the problem? What could go wrong? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? And the table was here, the pub. It's pretty much this was the orientation, and there was a, there was like a little screen here, and behind the screen there was uh, no, sorry, the dartboard was here, and there was a little screen there, and there was some more chairs. Mm. And Will's on that, bang, bang, we're playing killer. Will's yeah. hit, and I'm like, this one, this whole audience in a thing, and I'm going, this one for the win. <laughs> like 
<laughs> I've got no, that's it. One dart, two darts, exactly what I needed. This one for the win, gone, it's gone. Bang, hit the wire, spiraled. <laughs> Physically impossible, it defied the laws of physics. It's hit the wire and it spiraled about eight feet into the air, <laughs> over the screen, still tumbling like this, comes down and goes, <laughs> dunk. It stabbed an extra right in the end. And it's, it's stuck in the head. Oh, God, medic. Medic, man down. Man down. The extra's like that. It's all right. Don't worry about it. I can't even feel it. It's just, uh, <laughs> that, he was trying to be so polite, though, as well, because he didn't. Bless him, probably didn't want it. He was one of the regular extras as well. He didn't want to lose so it. So funny. he was like, I was like, I'm so sorry. And he's going, don't worry about it. <laughs> that, that was, it's, a, it's a flesh wound. <laughs> that was the last time we had darts on set. <laughs> we never, never saw darts yeah. again. No, they, they took them off the set, didn't they? Yeah. What's really <laughs> funny, though, is they still didn't trust us to not play darts. They had to remove them from the right, set. Because they knew we'd have played darts. Oh, my God. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. Right in the top of his head, and it stuck. It's so funny. Even at the time, it was scary <laughs> We and couldn't bad, stop laughing. But we were pissing us. <laughs> I know. And it was like... Because it was like... We were young enough still that I was like, do you think I'm going to get done? And you're like, no, nah, mate, you're all right. You won't get done. I'll back you up. I'll back you up. Like, like we were kids in school. It was school. like it was meant to be the way that dart went. I'll never know how that happened. Defy the laws of physics. So funny. How did it, the dart board was there and it, it looped it, it was, perfectly. It was meant for Perfectly. It. If you'd have done it as a special effect, people would have said it, it would never happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, good times. Did our attitude change? You see, the thing is, because we were so young, I look back at a lot of it with, I mean, it was fun. It was, don't get me wrong, it was fun, but I look Great back at a lot of it and go, we were kind of dicks. Like, I was young, but, man. Because, but then it, it wasn't when they're, when they're 19, well, We 20. just wanted to have fun, and we was in a show where we laughed. I mean, the rehearsals, we, re we thought it was It wasn't work. a serious show, We used to it? complain we about- We were making the wire. <laughs> we used to complain about our call times. What do you mean we got to be in at 10? 10 till 2? We well, did. You've we been did. this in an hour? We did. 10 till 2? We did. 10? 10, 10, you say? <laughs> hey, hold on. I'm not, I'm not even in the half, half of the first scene. I'm not in the I'm first scene. Half I'm, half half coming, I'm coming at half past. And we used to go, oh, nah, I'm not coming in. Oh, no. Can you believe that we would do that? I wouldn't dream of doing that oh, now. Oh, they'd say, don't be late. And we'd have a jar where oh. if you were late, you had to put a pound in it. <laughs> Ralph would just walk in late and just go, ah, tink, and put his pound in. No apology. There's my pound. And what? Oh, they not take his script on. They say, Ralph, so you've got to be off the book by tomorrow. So can you take your script on, turn it? And he went, I'll, I'll know it. I'll know it. <laughs> by osmosis. And the thing did. is, I did though. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I honestly would say I've, I, some of the best times though, just because we were young enough to really enjoy it. We'd, it wasn't hard work. And we just got to put on a show every week, live audience, saying things on telly that other people really not at that saying. time. Not at that time. You know what time. I mean? And having a load of fun with it, doing, and, and then and then going out every Friday night as a cast and getting pissed, and then having the weekend off. It Can was you just remember, like a dream. You job. say going out as a cast and getting pissed, but what mainly happened was we'd all go out, and after about forty-five minutes, I was just getting warmed up. <laughs> your, your eyes would start to be looking like runny eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and you get the, the mellow the mellow drink. This is the thing, we call it two pints, but two pints is about your limit before they start to water. And you, I go, you all right, mate? And you go. <laughs> I think I got- I'm fine, mate. I think, but remember though, no, we went afterwards, we go to the green room and have a few drinks. That's true, we did. And then we go out. So I, I was well six or seven in. Sometimes I had one before the show. Remember we go up to the BBC used to, bar. Yeah. You used to rob a sausage. You remember that? Yes, I do. <laughs> the queue was fucking massive. Well, because I couldn't afford a sausage. I can't believe you remember that. I do remember <laughs> that you did. And because every, every week, we go to the BBC canteen, and it was Ming in the food, and we'd go, and we, well, we thought we were so cool, we'd go, should we have a beer? <laughs> like, like, like thinking about what, what actors have done over the years and the complete like mental shit they've yeah, got to. We, the we thought we were so cool. So like, yeah, we're really rock and roll, should we have a beer? And then we'd get the thing and we'd, we'd queue up, and you would queue up and we'd have our dinner and we'd queue up, but you'd go, First, I think it was the first week you went, oh, I'm just going to rob a sausage. And, you, yeah. and I was like, dead goody two-shoes. I was like, don't do that. Why, why, why are you robbing a sausage? Someone's got to pay for that sausage. That's the taxpayer's sausage, that is. <laughs> and, um, and then because of that, 
because yeah. you knew it wound me up and it became a tradition. I think you robbed a sausage every single time. Well, it was tradition then, yeah. Yes, so mm. fair. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing as well how far they could get the beans wrong. Remember, I did be like a blanket of like cardboard on the beans. <laughs> really? Well, could, yeah, do you want some beans? Yeah, hold on. I'm going to be got a knife Just roll it. <laughs> yeah. Slice it. Cut the slice out. <laughs> yeah. Can you remember when it was? I don't think it was series two. It might have been three. But do you remember the audience changing? So like the oh first God, series. I remember the old people that had come thinking they were coming to see like points of view or something. Oh, yeah. And they joined the, they just, the first series, you know, they didn't know what it was. They, they advertised, but you, you don't have the same reach that you do now. Like, in no. the inter like people kind of know what show they're going to go and see. I would imagine more because you can, you can get the message out there on the internet and all that. But like in 99 or whatever it was, it was a different world. And that yeah. first series, people would turn up. A lot of old people not very happy. We had a couple of walkouts, didn't we? But yeah, but when you, you could hear them knitting. You know, we, we, we were thinking, this isn't our audience. <laughs> they were either knitting or tutting, yeah, or both. A, a whacking boiled sweets off the pissing false teeth. And you're thinking, these, these should have gone to bingo or something, because they're know. not going to get this. Lord of young kids effing and jeffing, talking about shagging and porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing can replace porn. Not even a dog, unless it's got big tits. That was one of the lines from Gazzy. <laughs> that was a gas line. <laughs> a dog can't replace porn unless it's got big tits. And there's the people knitting in the front row going, this is for me. What did he say? <laughs> John! What was that? John, she said big he said big tits now. Shut up. <laughs> We're leaving, John. Finish that hat for our Claire. <laughs> We're leaving. Yeah. yeah. And then once we did get our audience. Yeah, I can't it was... remember it's what we said before about how like it got so the first series went out and it. I don't know if you remember this, but the first series went out and it sort of died. I think, it, I think, it, yeah. I can't remember if it was on Choice or BBC Two or something, but it basically died. It didn't have a slot. It didn't find an audience. Critics hated it or whatever. And then because yeah. they were struggling, they just like had to keep repeating it. And just people just coming home from the pub went, this is ridiculous. I'm loving it. And they, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. what I found an audience. Students as well. A lot yeah. of the students loved it because it was based on student life. Susan Nixon was Sheridan, apparently. Um, her character, Janet was based on Susan herself and on all she spent in her student years was in pubs smoking and drinking. I mean, the early episodes, what are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? What's funny? What's, I don't understand. Now you can sort of understand why it took us so many takes to even get through a scene. I don't even know what I've said. What's funny? <laughs> I don't know, it just tickled me, sorry. Right, so, so, yeah, so it was Susan like, Nixon was Sheridan. Well, she, Susan Nixon, <laughs> Uh, she was Janet, right. so she wrote it based on her time as a student. So it was, so a lot of students could appreciate it because she spent most of her time sat in pubs, drinking and smoking. And obviously she wrote two pints at 16 years old. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it's she won an award. That. Unbelievable. Yeah. But do you remember the early days? You watch it back now, because it's been repeated a lot now, and people smoking in pubs. How no. weird that looks. No. No. Nearly every scene, Natalie Case is rolling up a fag, yeah. nearly every one, they're all smoking. Do you remember doing, this is when I first met you. <laughs> I just remembered, what? you fucking animal. What? I forgot about this till just now. What have we done now? The first time we met. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna put my cock on that girl's shoulder, was it? Is that what you're talking about? The producer, that, that, that one. Have, that could have been any number of times. <laughs> I've seen your cock more than I've seen my own. <laughs> not, Stop not, not, that time. not that time then. No. What was it then? Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is you at 22 or 21, right? I don't know what you're going to say. This is you. So <clears throat> we're invited to uh, do a rehearsed reading of, an epi of the pilot episode. Because back in the... Well, I still think you, you do do it. You do a rehearsed reading... And you turn up for a day at BBC and you've been cast and it's when they want to try and um, uh, commission a show, decide whether they're going to make a show. So what they do is often they get other BBC commissioners and heads of department in to watch uh, some actors. Yep. They've got to, and we did the rehearsal reading and we walked around with scripts and I'm like, hey, Gaz, what are you doing? And we're reading off the script. I don't remember any of this. Do you not remember it at all? None I remember it. it so, so well. And it was, in, it was at TV Centre in Shepherd's Bush. And... Um, and I sat, that's, I met you, was introduced to you, and sat, you know, knew who you were, because um, um, some people I knew were fans of Hollyoaks. <clears throat> and um, I, they said, uh, uh, Ralph said, and I went, hi, mate. And I have to say, first thing he said to me, lovely. He went, hey, mate, you're dead friendly. You're like, hey, how are you doing? Nice one. I loved, I loved the royal family, he said, which was really lovely, really sweet. And I was like, oh, you sound, right? <laughs> but we're sitting there. 
<laughs> about two minutes later, and you're like this, fiddling around. <laughs> I'm fully fiddling around up your asshole, right? And you went, hey, <laughs> smell that. <laughs> Why? I didn't do that for a while. <laughs> For a while! Was that me. your thing? I did it to my mum as well. Why? I don't know. It was just a shock factor. No, I remember that. They actually wrote it into the character. In if you see a lot of scenes with Gaz, I'm having a good route and I did it with Skip. And it was just a little, uh, a little, a little nod to, it yeah. Was a, yeah, a little nod to Mella. There was a character who came in, why, Wes why Wesley. When you, and I, I had to teach him about this. I want to ask you when you're doing a rehearsed reading for a show that you're hoping is going to get commissioned, you've just met a fellow actor. Why are you rubbing your own bum resin up under his beak? <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Oh, unbelievable, I'll never oh. forget that.